please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Daljeet Singh, Managing Director of Amber Enterprises India Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Hello and uh, good morning, everyone. First and foremost, I hope you all are keeping safe and healthy. On the call, I am joined by Mr. Sudhi Goyal, our Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Sanjay Arora, CEO of Electronics Division, Mr. Sachin Gupta, CEO of RACE and CAC Division, and SGA, our Investor Relations Advisors. We have uploaded our result presentation on the exchanges and I hope everybody had an opportunity to go through the same. The consumer durable industry witnessed good growth during the quarter. Despite concerns around the third COVID-19 wave, double vaccination has helped us in driving positive consumer sentiment. The demand was driven by a shift in consumer behavior from price consciousness towards technologically advanced premium products with quality value proposition and safety aspects. Work from home and stay at home continue to create good demand for the industry as leisure travel is restricted. So certain section of consumers are spending on upgrading consumer durable. Retailers have adopted omni-channel strategy to cater to consumer across channels. Retailers are also offering affordable finance schemes, extended warranty, same day installation services, which has helped to attract first-time consumers, which, further, which is further aiding the demand. Rising raw material prices and supply chain issues continue to plague the quarter. Umber has been able to pass on higher raw material prices to the customers and channel inventories levels are being managed by effective supply chain planning in line with growth expectations. I'm pleased to share that on all metrics, including revenue, ABETA, and PAT, we, we were able to surpass the pre-pandemic level for the quarter. Another important update during the quarter was on acquisition of a majority ownership in Umber PR Technoplus India Private Limited, as well as Passio India Private Limited. This acquisition will help our company to grow its component segment with focus on providing more backward integrated solution in key component of RAC segment, which is cross flow fan along with solution of injection molding component for other industries, which is refrigeration and automobile segment. We are glad to announce the commencement of production at our three new facilities. Kadi, which is Gujarat uh, for injection molding components, Chennai in Tamil Nadu for sheet metal component and heat exchanger, and Supa Maharashtra for our sheet metal components in phase one. The expenditure incurred for the commercialization of these three new plants led to decline in profitability for the standalone operation. However, once the revenue starts flowing in, we expect profitability to normalize. A little update on PLI scheme. During the quarter, Umber Enterprises has received approval for the manufacturing of AC components under normal investment category for a threshold incremental investment of rupees 300 crores. Our subsidiary engine electronics have also received approval for manufacturing lower value intermediaries of ACs under large investment category for a threshold incremental investment of 200 crores. We believe the production linked incentive scheme approved by the government would help provide a level playing field to domestic players and create an enabling environment for the industry to compete globally. I'll now talk about our divisional performance. Mobility application division, which includes SIDWAL. With the increase in government trust toward mobility for all, we believe we are in sweet spot to leverage this opportunity. The expansion of metros in new cities, as well as modernization of railways, are creating new opportunities in this space. We are making good pro progress on new product development for various business categories. Our order book stands healthy at a more than around rupees 450 crores. Update on motor division, which includes PICL. We have increased our product offering to our customers by adding new models for both the domestic and international markets. We are also adding new customers in this, in this division. We expect our motor division to double in revenues while also increasing margins. DLDC is currently a very small part of our portfolio we have, which we have recently started. 
reliability cycle is going on and we are about to start production hence bldc would be adding as revenue from both side in captive as well as also on component solution to our customers in coming financial years update on electronic division which includes ilgin and ever as a part of diversification we have started production of new age applications like wearable and hearables we have recently added both as our customer as the market is moving rapidly towards inverter acs we are confident of growing our revenue share from this division going forward there is a good traction due to pli scheme and we are rightly placed company to give the required solution we are also getting queries and already onboarded customers for inverter pcb both we are also getting a lot of queries and approvals are already in process for refrigerator and washing machine and other new products also so we are hopeful that in electronic division also we would be doubling the revenue in coming two years from now component division which include both ac and non ac components our component division has played a very positive role contribution from component division is increased to 54% in 9 months financial year 22 from 50% in 9 months financial year 21 we are adding new products new customers and new geographies we have onboarded new customers like samsung for sheet metal components and heat exchanger and voltas backo for injection molding components for washing machine and refrigerators a recent acquisition of umber pr is a part of component division business integration is happening smoothly and we expect future growth uh, future revenue growth in umber pr also update on rac division our rac division is performing in tandem with industry industry growth on a year to day basis is at single digit it seems that industry would touch around 6.2 to 6.5 million unit this financial year however at umber we are expected to touch around 3 million units this year inventory levels have been normalized in water acs are witnessing good growth on the commercial rac side we have added entire product lineup of our commercial ductables we have also started offering full range of our cassette acs to our existing customers we expect to outnumber the industry in volume terms in this financial year to conclude i would like to reiterate that our constant endeavor would be to increase penetration and increase our wallet share in existing customers continuously add new customers create a foothold in the exports market and enhance our products with new technologies by focusing on r&d i'll now take you through our consolidated financial highlights in revenue quarter 3 financial year 22 revenue stood at rupees 974 crores versus rupees 765 crores in q3 fy21 nine month fy22 revenue stood at 2270 crores versus 1432 crores in nine month fy21 for the quarter rac contributed 39% of total revenues while components and mobility application contributed 61% of the revenues operating a beta Q3 FY22 operating a beta stood at rupees 74 crores versus rupees 62 crores in Q3 FY21. Nine month FY22 operating a beta stood at rupees 163 crores versus rupees 81 crores in nine month FY21. Operating a beta margins for Q3 and nine month FY22 stood at 7.6% and 7.2% respectively. Q3 FY22 and nine month FY22 operating a beta. Does not include ESOP expense of rupees 4.17 crores and rupees 11.6 crores, respectively. PAT Q3 FY22 PAT stood at rupees 33 crores versus rupees 28 crores in Q3 FY21. Nine month FY22 PAT stood at rupees 52 crores versus rupees 7 crores in nine month FY21. At Amber, we are all set to leverage on multiple opportunities. our endeavor is to grab majority of market share on rac and component side we believe this opportunity will further strengthen our presence in domestic market and create a strong foothold in export market now i op- uh, open the floor for the questions here thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen we will now begin with the question and answer session anyone wishing to ask a question May please press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. 
participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question case assembles. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in this conference, we request you to limit your questions to two for participant only. The first question is from the line of Uncle Sharma from HDFC Standard Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, good morning, sir. Thanks for your time. Uh, just firstly, if you could tell us the volumes of ACs which are sold, uh, you know, during Q3, I think you said fully a number of closer to 3 million. Uh, if you could just tell us what was the number for Q3 and if possible, they come into IDU and window. So, in uh, uh, in total, like uh, uh, for the financial year, as I told, it's uh, we are expected to. Uh, be nearing 3 million, while on nine months, uh, we have done around 1.1 million uh, numbers. However, we are restricting to give the uh, diversified numbers of uh, ODU, IDU, and due to confidentiality matters. Okay, fair. Uh, but then, sir, because then, they, so my follow-up would be that you're looking at a pretty steep increase in Q4, right? I mean, you're doing about 1, one million odd in Q3, and you're looking at close to three for the full year implies almost two million numbers for Q4. So just on the overall demand side, uh, you know, how are you seeing demand uh, there? Uh, you know, we did hear about some slowdown in volume, especially in November, December for the industry as a whole. So if you could talk about, uh, you know, uh, where are you seeing the demand? Is it more for you because of new customers, or is it that you expect the industry to also uh, do equally well? So, so Ankur, the demand uh, is back to the normalized level now, and uh, uh, in the industry, and uh, we are pretty confident. And uh, our order book uh, looks at uh, uh, we will be uh, crossing around. Uh, we'll be doing around three million numbers. However, in the industry, if you see the demand should be back uh, from last year, like it was around 5.2 to 5.5 million. This year, we are expecting that it should do around 6.3 to 6.5 million. So, demand is coming back again. And uh, with, uh, of course, uh, the working from home as a new normal, everybody is spending upon the, uh, you know, uh, upgradation as well as the comfort living. And uh -huh. uh, this product is something linked to the uh, comfort living. And uh, we are hopeful that uh, the, the, the and third wave now with of COVID uh -huh. is also, uh, it's pretty much uh, not uh -huh. hit us that badly as we were expecting uh -huh. earlier, like second wave. So we are hopeful that uh, this should pretty much further add to the demand uh, of the industry also. Okay, and uh, so just on that uh, piece of whether it is uh, more of market share gains for you, uh, you know, uh, and also are you seeing the, you know, the benefits of the import ban? I remember you said going into 23 as well, you would start seeing the benefits come through, you know, in terms of the import ban and therefore you getting a bigger share of, uh, you know, brands who are earlier importing. Uh, so is that benefit also flowing through in Q4, or is that more of a FY33 uh, so, kind of? Thing? So out of out of all the uh, numbers uh, which we did, uh, of, uh, like due to the import ban, the phase one mm -hmm. started with the gas charging. Yeah, yeah. We have been able to convert into the full-fledged manufacturing for out of that around two customers, and remaining mm -hmm. two to three customers would be now converting into the coming financial year. Uh, uh, into the full flight manufacturing. So import plan is uh, definitely playing a good role. Uh, but at the same time, uh, those uh, bigger numbers uh, you would be seeing the, will be added in next financial year, uh, looking forward. Okay. okay. And just one last question, if I may, would be a uh, Sorry to interrupt, sir. Uh, Mr. Sharma, we may we request that you return to the question queue. Is there are participants waiting for their turn? Sure. Okay, cool. Thanks. Thank you. We request participants to limit their questions to two for participant only. The next question is in the line of Madhav Madha from Fidelity Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning and thank you so much for your time. Uh, I just wanted to understand, you know, like we've added both as a customer for our electronics division. Um, it seems like Amber is, uh, you know, uh, actively moving beyond RAC only as their end market into more of a diversified uh, set of uh, end market. So could you give us like just your maybe your three to five year uh, outlook on uh, how we expect to grow 
beyond the RSE division as well, and like what are the growth opportunities and sort of strategies that we are in terms of? So, so Madhav, as uh, Amber, now uh, we are diversified into five uh, business verticals, uh, like you've seen, uh, and this is how we are seeing. So, one of the verticals is room AC division uh, verticals. Another is components, which includes both AC and non-AC. And third is the electronics, which includes Elgin and uh, Ever. And fourth is our mobility application, which is Sedwal. And fifth is our motor uh, vertical, which is PICL. So looking into all these cylinders, all these five verticals are seeing uh, good growth uh, due to multiple reasons in each and every vertical. And uh, we are uh, looking at uh, uh, good growth numbers uh, all in uh, RAC also, where we are adding uh, uh, customers, uh, uh, you know, due to import ban as well as due to more offerings. In uh, electronics vertical also, we are uh, hoping to double the revenue in coming two years. Uh, because of increase in our uh, horizon of inverter AC controller board now being approved by various customers. We have also uh, expanded into variables and variables with both, both as a customer. Similarly, in our mobility application uh, division is seeing a good growth uh, with a new thrust uh, of air-conditioned uh, coaches as well as uh, different verticals into the, uh, you know, more offering of the products. Uh, 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 for the mobility application also is on the cards. Uh, similarly, in uh, PICL, uh, we are seeing with BLDC motor coming, which is pretty much uh, we are not uh, offering any solutions over there. Uh, now, that is into reliability, and we are hopeful that in the PICL also, we should be, uh, you know, uh, doubling the revenue. And in uh, components, and uh, which is includes AC and non-AC components, uh, you know, we are seeing a lot of traction over there. And we have added the Samsung as a customer where we have uh, uh, added for components of uh, sheet metal and uh, heat exchangers. We are also uh, talking to Samsung for further components, uh, or maybe of injection molding or other components and PCB also. Uh, and we have added Voltas Beko as customers for refrigerator and washing machine. And wherever we are not present for refrigerator and washing machine as an offering in electronic division, probably we are offering there also uh, in electronic division. So all our, uh, uh, you know, uh, divisions now uh, uh, are seeing uh, towards a huge growth. And uh, we are hopeful uh, that in next, uh, like, two to three years, all these divisions uh, should be pretty much uh, uh, double the size where we are today. And, and then each of these divisions has, like, their own, uh, uh, like, a business head, and each of them are looking at opportunities across all of the various end markets, right, rather than just this RAC. Yes, it's a focused uh, approach. Uh, each uh, division is now headed by a CEO. Like, for electronics, we have Mr. Sanjay, Mr. RAC, we have Mr. Sachin with us. Uh, Mr. Udevir is there for mobility application. So, so each and every division is now uh, with a focus approach, and we would be looking to expand division as all. Well. So, there could be multiple opportunities, whether it is RAC, non RAC. Uh, uh, you know, we would be looking at all across uh, for the uh, expanding the horizon of the division. So it could be like for components, if you get uh, good opportunities, injection molding components. So we would be definitely looking at from that angle. Uh, rather than only RAC and uh, non-RAC uh, segment. So we would be increasing uh, and giving the solution in each division all across the world completely. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we request you to limit your questions to two for participant only. The next question is on the line of Ravi Swaminathan from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, my first question is with respect to the kind of volume growth that we anticipate for the air conditioning market next year. Uh, this year, you had mentioned it's around 6.3 to 6.5 million. What kind of uh, volume growth we can expect for next year, assuming that there is no lockdown in the, during the peak summer season? And uh, what kind of growth that Amber can anticipate uh, similar for that similar level? So uh, I anticipate that uh, with the now third COVID wave not hitting us as well as not seeing any uh, future COVID waves coming into. So industry should be better than the pre-COVID levels. Uh, so I think so it should be touching somewhere around 7.8 uh, 
million to 8 million could be around 7.5 to 7.8 million would be i would say a good number to achieve from current 6.2 to 6.5 which would be surpassing the pre covid levels uh, i mean this is what i feel so looking into that uh, now the air the, the working from home would be still a new normal because mm-hmm. that's a, uh, that's a new normal now rather than uh, linked to the covid uh, it would be again uh, uh, you know people would be definitely uh, mm-hmm. you know uh, investing into the comfort living got it sir and uh, amber uh, would we grow on par with the industry or above the industry if so what what kind of growth we can see in terms of volume so so as amber we have always outnumbered the industry so here also we would be definitely looking at increasing our market share uh, mm-hmm. with the industry and uh, outnumbering the industry uh, as always uh, our endeavor has been got it sir my second question is with respect to the commercial air conditioning initiatives that we have taken what kind of proportion of the overall revenues commercial air conditioning now and how much can it grow into over the next 2 to 3 years and if you can give the same commentary for exports also we will take so for commercial ac uh, the it has just started and a uh, couple of uh, the offerings we have already given to our customers samples as well as reliability cycles and all that are going on Uh, mm-hmm. while with some customer it has already started in the production uh, cassette mm-hmm. ac which was not in our offering as a part of commercial is also now part of it so that mm-hmm. has also that is seeing a lot of good traction because there no one is offering in the industry today uh, so, as an odm solution so we have already started that offering and a uh, lot of traction is there so mm-hmm. uh, i would see uh, that uh, the number should be growing however it would not be a lot of i mean it would not be a very big chunk of the revenue uh as in the percentage point of view as a overall control level of the amber group uh, but but yes these are the numbers uh, these are this is a products which we were not offering and uh, definitely it in, increases our uh, uh, expand expands our uh, product offering to our customers and more uh, you know we increase the wallet share with our customers too got got and with respect to exports sir, exports also so exports uh, we are already like uh, we earlier also mentioned that uh, exports is a of course there is a high reliability cycle and uh, with each country have their own energy norms and mm-hmm. uh, energy regulations so we need to develop the products so uh, so the products for us market now is already under uh, prototype prototyping mm-hmm. and uh, are now been uh, of as a, as the prototypes we are offering to our customers so i would i should see another one and a half to two years further uh, we should be able to crack this into the mass production level while at the yeah. middle east level uh, uh, we are seeing some traction and uh, the product lineup is uh, pretty much there and now the reliability cycle with the customers as well as uh, you know the uh, the production order should start flowing in coming at least seven to eight months or maybe one year around one month one year from now got it sir and my final question is with respect to the console ebitda margin so are we set for uh, somewhere around 8 8 and 1% kind of ebitda margin over the next one two years uh, considering the fact that there is a pli scheme where there will be some benefits but on the other hand commodity prices are going up so what kind of margin that you would be anticipating on well well it's very difficult to tell about the percentage level looking into the commodity changes and all that however we are confident of maintaining our beta levels as well as increasing in the value terms as we move forward got it yeah yeah thanks thank you participants we request you to limit your questions to two only The next question is from the line of Dhruv Jain from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you. So I had a question with respect to the standalone non-RAC component business, right? We've seen a strong growth in that. But if I'm not wrong, that also houses the gas charging element. So if you could just give us a sense in terms of, you know, what's been the contribution of the gas charging part. And, you know, we've generally also seen a very good growth. So if, uh, if you could just give us some sense on what's happened in this quarter. so uh, uh so so uh, you are asking about the gas charging uh, uh, the part or like revenue from gas charging yes sir so on average like uh, uh, like uh, you know we need to get back to you into the gas charging exact numbers uh, as to what revenue or what kind of uh, 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 like uh, uh, margin we have got from there uh but however we have uh, done the gas charging is uh, 
around the four four hundred thousand numbers which we have done the gas charging so far uh, in first nine months, and uh, that is not a part of uh, uh, this one point one million. That's a separate from one point one million. So which will be in the standalone business itself, right? Yes. 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 Okay. So I'll get back to your team for that number. Just sir, the other question was with respect to the acquisition of. Uh, you know, Patsio India. Now, I understand that you also had a offering on the Crossflow fan side. So, if you could just give us some sense on the past numbers of this company and the rationale uh, that you, you know, that for for which you bought this company. Thanks. So, so this num company is basically uh, is in the leadership position of uh, offering its Crossflow fan, and that is the product which we were not offering as a as to our customers as a component uh, level. So now with this uh, company with uh, Amber, we have been able to increase our uh, uh, share of uh, uh, of a cross flow fan with our customer. Uh, historically, last year it, this company has done uh, at uh, uh, 51 crores of revenue, and uh, we are looking at uh, this year pretty much uh, somewhere around 90 crores of the revenue at the financial year end. Some sense on the margins. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Mr. Jain. No. We request that you return to the question queue. The participants waiting for their turn. Thank you. A reminder to the participants: we request you to limit your questions to two per participant only. We'll move on to the next question. That is on the line of Nitin Arora from Access Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for uh, taking my question. Uh, sorry again. Uh, I'm asking more on the industry side. Uh, because your commentary starts talking about a good demand. Uh, so when we look at your volume growth, it's down 27%, uh, you know, on a on a declining base of 5%, and you're saying demand is good. Uh, and uh, Q4 run rate, uh, what you guided, looks, you know, optically very high. So, uh, and when we look at the retails of rep, washers, everything is on a declining mode for Q3 as per the data. Uh, so, you know, just wanted to understand from you is one, how has been the industry decline for this quarter? Because you always say you always outperform the industry. So, I'm assuming on the declining also you would have outperformed it. Uh, so, how much would have been the industry decline? And second, though January has gone now completely, how has been the confidence of the channel of the OEMs, uh, you know, taking back the inventory because the temperature is still not, uh, you know, looking that great to procure the inventory and go ahead. Uh, and I think now there has been no shortages too much in the system compared to the last year. So if you can throw some light on that, that'll be really helpful, sir, of where this confidence of demand is good is coming back. Thank you, sir. Okay. So Nitin, uh, uh, like post the second wave, uh, you know, everybody was apprehensive on the inventory levels and all that. Uh, but uh, a good thing was that there was a very normalized uh, uh, inventory levels uh, uh, post the second wave of COVID. You know, however, uh, as we move forward, there were two challenges. One was the QCO, another was the BE rating change, uh, which was uh, leading to a lot of ambiguity because uh, some everybody as industry requested to uh, move these forward, uh, looking into the you know inventory levels as well as looking into the second wave, which has hurt us, hit us, and uh, you know. Uh, so as industry, everybody requested the government, and but there are a lot of uh, there was a lot of ambiguity in terms of uh, you know this BE rating change and QCO uh, till the till the end of uh, you know till the October November basically, which was leading to uh, I would say uh, you know a lot of. Uh, uh, conservativeness uh, in the industry. However, now that is past post us and past us. And uh, third wave was also, everybody was envisaging third wave and nobody knew that what kind of wave would it be. And now I think so third wave also is uh, pretty much, if not past us, but at least we are through due to this, not to the, that bad as it was in the second wave. So now everybody uh, is pretty much optimistic about uh, the industry and about the demand. And uh, uh, you know, and that is why we are seeing a lot of uh, a good order book is there with us uh, for this uh, this Q4 quarter, uh, and we are envisaging that uh, the industry should be back uh, with a good demand. 
and should hit around 6.3 to 6.5 million numbers, and we should be touching around the 3 million numbers. Okay, so generally, uh, thanks, thanks for the update, uh, uh, really helpful. And so generally, all the other businesses, uh, you know, when you're entering the rep uh, part, uh, and, and Motra has been our forte, and we want to expose in the BLDC. But do you think, uh, from a profitability perspective, we already, you know, uh, run a business where we hold a very high market share and run a very thin margin business. I'm talking in percentage terms, not in absolute, because that's the seasonality which gets you growth in the absolute EBITDA. Uh, you think from a profitability perspective, you're the last entrant in that space, whether it's variable, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, uh, the rep part and people, existing vendors holds really big market shares there. Uh, so from a profitability perspective to scale up, you know, uh, you think it will take much more time uh, and if the existing cash flows of the existing business only will support them uh, because generally the capex requirement uh, you know has been very uh, on a higher side for you uh, being whether you acquire a company you put capex there or whether in the existing business so if you can throw some light on the profitability perspective on this new business that will be helpful sir. that's my last question thank you sir so within uh, from uh, our refrigerator and all that what we are looking at is to an expand our horizon offerings or the components of the uh, refrigerator washing machine and not the complete finished product as of now you know uh, and uh, where uh, in components uh, the margin levels are in line to the industry standard of the existing components only over there uh, rest regarding in terms of capex uh, increasing in terms of the uh, you know, uh, for the for the offerings of the, this should be we we should be able to support it uh, from our own uh, internal accruals only. This doesn't require a lot of capex. However, at the same time, also if you look into it, that uh, we are into primarily into AC side, the refrigerator and washing machine added to that in the component same component segment would add us to the better asset utilization only. So as in uh, it's, it creates a good win-win situation. Uh, for the customer as well as for us and that is why we are looking into uh, more and more better offering to uh, to our customers uh, from the same uh, set of the uh, assets if possible thank you, thank you. A reminder to the participants to request to limit their questions to do for participant only the next question is on the line of Aditya Bhartia from Investec. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good morning, sir. Um, so, first thing that I wanted to understand was on gross margin, uh, wherein our performance has been uh, uh, pretty decent, especially given uh, the way commodity costs have moved up. Um, now, what we understand is that brand owners are struggling to pass on the complete impact to customers. Uh, while despite having an ODM business, we appear to have passed on a fair bit of impact to customers. Uh, just want to understand why, how has that been possible? Because historically also you've mentioned on uh, numerous occasions that typically there's a bit of a delay in passing on increased costs. And is ban on uh, 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 import of refrigerant filled ACs improving your bargaining power with customers? customer? So, uh, Aditya, uh, in terms of gross margin, we have been able to uh, maintain uh, our gross margins as uh, uh, we envy such. And uh, commodity prices, we were able to pass on to our customers uh, because obviously everybody understood that there is a huge uh, uh, you know, impact on the commodity pricing. And uh, uh, with uh, all the new ratings which were coming in, as well as new model lineup coming in, uh, we were able to successfully pass on with our customers because this is something which we started discussing long time back with our customers uh, in terms of uh, passing on these, uh, uh, you know, commodities uh, because uh, at the same because there is a huge impact over there, mm -hmm. and we were able to successfully make customer understand as well as uh, you know uh, increase this. Uh, uh, pass on these commodity changes to our customers. Uh, at the same time, the ban on the refrigerant uh, obviously is a the completely different. That has no, uh, uh, I mean, no impact on this com uh, commodity pricing, or maybe I would say uh, uh, negotiation with the current customers on this commodity because that is completely different. Uh, that is dealing to this commodity price. Obviously, there is a, there was a change on the commodity pricing over there also. Uh, but that's something we were able to uh, 
uh, take it from the customers immediately uh, because that was a part of our contract that if there is any commodity change, I mean, they, they could be passed on immediately. But so historically, we have seen a bit of a lag. Uh, um, uh, this time, there has been no lag, pretty much. Uh, and especially with customers suffering, with, with brand owners suffering, how is it that we managed? And the going forward also, should we be building in uh, almost similar margins? No, it w there was a lag. Uh, however, uh, you know, uh, we were able to discuss with our customers uh, that we need to start it ahead of time. Uh, rather than just waiting for uh, end of the quarter or, uh, you know, uh, and then discussing. Uh, so uh, maintaining the discipline as well as in QC also, a lot of uh, commodities were, uh, were were settling down. So that also helped us. And we envisage in Q4 also, like uh, you see that a lot of commodities have pretty much settled down and the pricing have settled down. So there should not be any uh, impact uh, of the commodity. And if and I mean, there is a substantial change, we would be able to go to our customers back and uh, ask for the changes. And that's it. Uh, and last question, sir, on... Mr. Bharatiya, may we request that you return to the question queue? Sure. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. Participants, we request you to limit your questions to two per participant only. The next question is from the line of Bharat Shah from ASK Investment Managers Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, just uh, uh Two questions. Uh, one, if we uh, if we uh, consider the current uh, year is the base, uh, that is financial year ended March 22. Over the next three years, uh, that is from fiscal 22 to fiscal 25. Uh, do we believe overall business uh, would approximately double? And uh, if you can share uh, the structural growth driver for each of the uh, verticals, both for the industry as well as number in uh, specific. And uh, second question, I, if you can throw some light on uh, what will happen to profitability uh, as we move along in that next uh, three years plus kind of a journey? Sure, Bharaji, thank you very much. And uh, uh, so, Bharaji, like we are now uh, focusing ourselves as Amber into uh, uh, five business divisions uh, RAC, uh, uh, then electronics, uh, PICL, which is motors, uh, then mobility application and components. So all of these uh, verticals, uh, as Amber, we are in a very sweet spot to and uh, to capture upon the growth which is in front of us. Uh, specifically, if you see, there are a lot of uh, uh, in. If I take uh, division by division or business head by business head, like uh, in room AC uh, with a lot of uh, localization and uh, make in India and PLI incentives, uh, as well as uh, this working from home. Uh, culture uh, is leading to a lot of uh, demand uh, locally over here. And uh, as Amber, uh, we are now present in South Side also, uh, which we were earlier not there. Uh, we, I mean, which, this three city should be operational pretty much in uh, end of uh, July, August. And uh, we should be able to cater to our customers from there also. And we are already present in North. We are now, uh, uh, we are also having uh, offering of the entire product lineup with us. Uh, so, so as Amber, we are ready to uh, capitalize upon this uh, growth which lies ahead of us in room AC division. Uh, and since we are present everywhere and we are uh, have the complete product lineup and product range in ODM category with our, uh, and we can increase the wallet share with the customers as we move forward. Uh, secondly, uh, into the components uh, also, uh, we have we have added a couple of uh, plants uh, like uh, two brownfield facilities. One in Kadi, which is uh, which started operational. There we are looking at uh, refrigerator and washing machine, and we are and we search further uh, inquiries from uh, customers over there like Hitachi, and uh, uh, as we move forward also. Uh, and in Samsung in Chennai, we started with Samsung over there, where we have added 
uh, sheet metal and uh, heat exchangers as components for uh, uh, AC and uh, our uh, refrigerator components also as you move forward. And there is a lot of other inquiries also uh, uh, for that uh, components division. So we are looking at, a, uh, and then our injection molding side also is looking at a, a, a good uh, uh, growth rate. Uh, good inquiries are uh, there in the pipeline. Similarly, in electronics also, uh, we see uh, good inquiries for PCBAs of refrigerator, washing machine, air conditioner, inverter controller board now with uh, already approved with a couple of customers and some customers would be coming onboarded in coming financial year. So we should be able to gain the market share as well as gain the wallet share with all these customers as we move forward. Uh, and uh, mobility application, we are already sitting on a, a handsome order book of around 450 odd crores. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that is something uh, we are pretty strong over there. And uh, recently, uh, you know, with new and new type of air conditioners required in mobility application, we are already there uh, and in, in, uh, uh, in uh, as offerings to our customers. We have already onboarded uh, uh, good customers like Allstrom and Bombardier in mobility application. So all are uh, similarly in PICL also, the BLDC is something which we were pretty empty over there. And with that offering already there, so RAC, uh, you know, where uh, we were not offering at all any motors in the indoor side, we'll be able to offer that. So each and every vertical good should see a good, diverse, a good growth. And uh, we are highly hopeful uh, that we should be able to, as Amber, we are present all across Pan India presence. So we should be able to capitalize upon uh, this growth uh, due to obviously uh, making India push from the government due to uh, the demand which has been aggregated as we move forward into the country. So, uh, just we see. Uh, to... Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Shah. Some may be request that you return to the question here. There no, are no, this, uh, this is just the first question, uh, the follow-up that I'm asking. Uh, on the next three years, from fiscal 22 to 25, uh, supposing our business is 100 in the fiscal 22, do we think it will be more like 200 plus uh, by the time we complete three years from 20? And uh, whether profitability would be uh, maintained, improved, uh, or uh, reduced? So, I mean, as, as a company, we definitely would be looking forward to grow at the beta level. I mean, we'll be able to try to maintain 25% absolute return on a beta levels, moving from FY22 to FY25. I think that's, I think so, uh, uh, that's what we would uh, like to maintain as, as we move forward. 25% growth in EBITDA over that three.